Hi, welcome to this Corp Mars video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the practice questions on multiplication. So if you need any extra help in multiplication, if you go to corpmavs.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video numbers 199 and 200, there's dedicated video tutorials there on multiplication. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the Corp Mavs practice questions. So let's get started. So question number one. Question number one, we've been asked to work out 13 multiplied by 9. So let's write our 13, so 13, and then our multiplication sign, and then 9, so 13 multiplied by 9, and then a line beneath it. Then we've got 9 times 3, 9 times 3 is 27, put our 7 down and carry our 2. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 2 is 11. So our answer would be 117. So our answer is 117. And just to recap, we've done 9 times 3, that's 27, we put our 7 down, carry our 2. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 2 is 11. So our answer is 117. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number two. Question number two, we've been asked to work out 27 multiplied by 14. So we've got 27, and then our 14, and then our multiplication symbol, and our line beneath it. So we're going to multiply 27 by 4 to begin with, and then we're going to do 27 multiplied by 10. So let's do 27 multiplied by 4. So 4 times 7 is 28, so put our 8 down, carry our 2. And 4 times 2 is equal to 8, plus 2 is 10. So 27 multiplied by 4 is 108. We're now going to do 27 multiplied by 10. Now whenever we multiply by a digit in the tens column, we're just going to put a 0 down, and we're going to do 1 times 7, and 1 times 7 is 7, so put our 7 down, and 1 times 2 is 2. So 27 multiplied by 10 is 270. And now we just need to add them together. 8 plus 0 is 8. 0 plus 7 is 7, and 1 plus 2 is 3. So 27 multiplied by 14 would be 378, and that's it, 378. Okay, let's go to our next question, question number 3. So question number 3, we've been asked to work out 86 multiplied by 25. So we've got 86 multiplied by 25. So we're going to do 86 multiplied by 5, 86 multiplied by 20, and then add them together. So 5 times 6 is 30, put our 0 down, carry our 3. 5 times 8 is equal to 40, plus 3 is 43, so that's going to be 430. So 86 multiplied by 5 is 430. Now we need to do 86 multiplied by 20. So let's put our 0 down, so we, if we multiply by 20, we can multiply by 10, and then multiply by 2. So we put our 0 down. 2 times 6 is equal to 12, so put our 2 down, carry our 1. And 2 times 8 is equal to 16, plus 1 is 17. So 86 multiplied by 20 would be 1720. Now we just need to add them together. So 0 plus 0 is 0, 3 plus 2 is equal to 5, 4 plus 7 is equal to 11, so put our 1 down, carry our 1, and 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So 86 multiplied by 25 is 2150, and that's it, 2150. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number four. So question number four says, find the product of 53 and 71. So in maths, the term product means what you get whenever you multiply two numbers together. So the product of two and five is 10. So if we want to find the product of 53 and 71, we multiply them together. So we've got 71 multiplied by 53. And we've just written down 71 multiplied by 53 and our line beneath it. We're going to do 71 multiplied by 3, 71 multiplied by 50, and then add them together. 3 times 1 is 3, so put the 3 down. And then 3 times 7 is 21, so then that's going to be 213. So 71 multiplied by 3 is 213. Now we're going to do 71 multiplied by 50, so let's put our 0 down. 5 times 1 is 5, and 5 times 7 is 35, so that's 3,550. And now we just need to add these together. So 3 plus 0 is 3, 1 plus 5 is 6, 2 plus 5 is 7, and then we've got our 3. So the answer is 3,763. So the product of 53 and 71 is 3,763, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number five. So question number five says, a football team brings eight coaches or eight buses of supporters to a cup match and each coach holds 53 passengers. So each of the coaches is holding 53 passengers. How many supporters are brought to the cup match by the eight coaches? So there's eight coaches. Each one of them has 53 supporters inside of it. So we just need to do 53 multiplied by eight. So 53 multiplied by eight. And that'll be our answer. Eight times three is 24. So put our four down and carry our two. 8 times 5 is 40, plus 2 is 42. So there's going to be 424 supporters in the 8 coaches. So let's write that down. 424. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 6. So question number 6 says, at a wedding there's 18 tables of guests. So there's 18 tables. I'm not going to draw 18 tables here, but there's 18 tables of guests. 
14 of the tables seat eight guests. So 14 of these tables have eight guests sat around them. And then four tables are a bit bigger. They have 12 guests at each of those tables. I've been asked to work out the total number of guests. So we need to do 14 times eight. That'll tell us how many people are sat at these 14 tables. We need to do four times 12. That'll tell us how many people are sat at these four tables and then add them together. And that'll tell us the total number of guests. So let's start off with four times 12. Four times 12 is equal to 48. So that'll be 48 guests sat around these four tables. Now we need to do 14 multiplied by 8. So 14 multiplied by 8. 8 times 4 is 32. Put our 2 down, carry our 3. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So we had 14 tables that see 8 guests each. So altogether that's 112 people at those 14 tables. And then we've got 4 tables that see 12 guests. So that's 4 times 12 is 48 at those tables. And then if we add them together, 112 plus 48, let's see what we get. 2 plus 8 is equal to 10, put our 0 down and carry our 1. 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 1 is 6, and then we've got our 1, so we've got 160. So the total number of guests at the wedding is 160, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 7. Now, if I actually tried to read this question about 20 times already, and I keep making a mistake on this first sentence, Alfie, Betty and Carmine are tortoises, tortoises, and Alfie is three times older than Betty, Betty is twice the age of Carmine, Carmine is 17 years old, how old is Alfie? Okay, so let's go through that again. Carmine is 17 years old, so Carmine is 17. And Betty is twice the age of Carmine. So if we double Carmine's age, we'll find Betty's age. So we've got this tortoise and Carmine, and he's 17, and Betty's double his age, so let's multiply by two. Two times seven is 14, so put our four down and carry our one. Two times one is two, plus one is three. That means Betty is 34 years old. So that tortoise is 34 years old. I should have changed this to turtle, that's a bit easier to say. And Alfie is three times older than Betty. So Alfie is three times Betty's age. Now Betty's 34 and Alfie's three times older. So Alfie's quite old. He's gonna be 34 multiplied by three. So this tortoise, Alfie, is 34 multiplied by three. So three times four is 12, put our two down and carry our one. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. That means that Alfie is 102 years old. So how old is Alfie? 102. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 8. So question number 8 says, 800 people went to a charity ice hockey match between Coventry and Guildford, and the adult tickets are £8 each, and child tickets are £5 each, and out of the 800 people, 218 of them are children, work out how much money is raised for charity. So we know that 800 people are at the match and 218 are children, so the rest are adults, so 800 take away 218 will tell us how many adults there are. Zero take away eight, well, we're gonna to need to borrow, well there's nothing to borrow from, so let's borrow from here, that's a seven and a 10, borrow again, that's a nine and a 10. 10 take away eight is two, nine take away one is eight, and seven take away two is five. So that means there's 218 children, and there are so it's 218 children, and they each pay five pound each, and there's 582 adults, and they pay eight pound each. So let's work out how much money the adults pay in total. So 582 multiplied by eight, and see what we get. Eight times two is 16, so put our six down, carry our one. Eight times eight is 64, plus one is 65, so I'll put our five down and carry our six. And eight times five is 40, plus six is equal to 46. So in total, the adults pay 4,656 pound for their tickets. Now in terms of the children, there's 218 of them and they pay five pound each, or their parents do, or someone pays five pound for them, but maybe they do. Five times eight is 40, so put our zero down, carry our four. Five times one is five, plus four is nine, and five times two is 10. So that means that the children, their tickets in total cost 1,090 pound. And the question says, how much money is raised in total? So we need, now need to add these numbers together. So 4,656 plus 1,090, and let's see what we get. So scroll down a bit. Six plus zero is six. Five plus nine is 14. Put our four down and carry our one. Six plus zero is six, plus one is seven, and four plus one is five. So that means in total, for charity, the total amount raised is 5,746 pound, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number nine. So question number nine says, James wants to bake 76 cupcakes, so he wants to buy 76 cupcakes, and he's gonna place three mini chocolate eggs on top of each cupcake. 
So he's going to place three chocolate mini eggs on top of each of the cupcakes and the 76 of them. So if we do 76 times three, that'll tell us how many little mini chocolate eggs he needs to put on top of them in total. And he's got five bags of mini chocolate eggs. Each bag contains 45 mini chocolate eggs. Does he have enough mini eggs? So let's work out how many mini eggs he needs to put on top of them in total. So he wants to make 76 cupcakes and he's going to put three on top of each of them. So we're going to multiply that by three to see how many he needs. 3 times 6 is 18, so put our 8 down, carry our 1. 3 times 7 is 21, plus 1 is 22. So he needs 228 in total. Now let's see how many he's got. So he's got 5 bags, and each bag contains 45 mini eggs, so 45 multiplied by 5. So 5 times 5 is 25, put our 5 down, carry our 2. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 2 is 22, so that's 225. So he's got 225 mini eggs, he needs 228 mini eggs. Does he have enough? No, he doesn't. He's free short. No, he is free short. Okay, so question number 10. Question number 10 says, here are two boxes that contain numbers. So we've got box one and box two. And in box one, we've got the number seven, five, nine, and four. And in box two, we've got 19, 74, 25, and 96. And we've been asked to circle one number from each box and multiplies together to give an answer between 500 and 600. So we just need to choose, and this is a calculator question, which is quite nice. We just need to choose a number, for instance, seven, and times it by these numbers and see if we get an answer that's between 500 and 600. I'm not going to do seven times 19 because I know seven times 20 is 140, so that's going to be way too small. So I'm going to choose maybe some of the bigger numbers. But you just need to keep going until you find two numbers that will multiply together to be an answer between 500 and 600. And if you do 7 multiplied by 74, if you do 7 multiplied by 74, that will be equal to... 518. So that's equal to 518. And you could have tried other numbers and just keep doing the multiplications and see if you get a number between 500 and 600. I actually noticed that 5 wouldn't work with any number because we've got 5. Now to get a number between 500 and 600, well 5 times 100 is 500 and none of the numbers in box 2 are as large as 100. So it wouldn't be 5 or 4. And then you could try 7 and 9 and so on. And 7 times 74 is equal to 518. And that's a possible answer. And we've circled those numbers. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 11. So question number 11 says, a mug weighs 293 grams. So we've got this mug and it weighs 293 grams. And then we're told a shelf can safely support up to two kilograms. And in grams, that's 2,000 grams because in each kilogram, there's a thousand grams, kilo, thousand. So one kilogram is a thousand grams. Two kilograms would be 2,000 grams. So a mug weighs 293 grams. The shelf can safely support up to 2,000 grams. And we've been asked to work out if seven mugs can be safely placed on the shelf and to show you're working. So let's do 293 multiplied by seven to see how heavy those mugs would be. So 293, the weight of each mug, multiplied by seven because there's seven of them and see how heavy those mugs are. So seven times three is 21, put a one down, carry our two. Seven times nine is 63, plus two is 65, so put our five down, carry our six. And seven times two is 14, plus six is 20. So that's 2,051 grams. Now that's above 2,000 grams or above two kilograms. So that's heavier. So the seven mugs are more than what safely can be placed on the shelf. So no, um, they could be placed on the shelf, but it might not be safe, so I wouldn't risk it. So no. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 12. So Mr. Jones owns an electronics shop. So he owns a shop that sells electronics. So for instance, fridges and TVs and things like that. And he orders 16 laptops at £312 each. And he's going to sell the 16 laptops at £500 each. And we've been asked to work out his profit. So we could do this in a couple of different ways. One way what we could do is we could work out how much he pays for the laptop. So we could do 312 multiplied by 16. That would tell us how much he buys the laptops for. We could then do 500 multiplied by 16. That would tell us how much he sells the laptops for and then take them away and see how much profit he makes. So that's the approach I'm going to use. Another approach in this question is because he buys 16 laptops and sells the 16 laptops and we know he buys each one for £312 and we, he sells them for £500. So if we take them away way that'll be how much profit he makes on each one of the laptops and then if we times that by 16 that'll be the total profit so each one of those approaches would work in this question and i'm going to use the first approach 312 multiplied by 16 to see how much he pays for the laptops to begin with so six times two is equal to 12 so put our two down carry our one six times one is six plus one is seven so seven and six times three is 18 so we've done 312 multiplied by 6, that's 1,872. Now we need to do 312 multiplied by 10. So put our 0 down, 1 times 2 is 2, 
1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times 3 is 3. So if we add these together, we'll see how much money Mr. Jones paid for the laptops. 2 plus 0 is 2, 7 plus 2 is 9, 8 plus 1 is 9, and 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. So he bought the laptops for £4,992. Now let's see how much he sold them for. So he sold them for £500 each, and there's 16 of them. So we need to do 500 multiplied by 16. So let's multiply by 6 to begin with. 6 times 0, 0. 6 times 0, 0. 6 times 5 is 30. So 500 multiplied by 6 is 3,000. Now we're going to multiply by 10, so let's put our 0 down. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. And 1 times 5 is 5. And then if we add them together, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, and 3 plus 5 is 8. So let me see, he sells the laptops for £8,000. So he buys them for £4,992, he sells them for £8,000. So if we take them away, that'll be how much profit he makes. So 8000 subtract £4,992, and that'll be his profit. So 0 take away 2, we're going to need to borrow. There's nothing to borrow from there, there. So let's call that a 7 and a 10 cross out again, and 9 and a 10, cross off again, 9 and a 10. 10 take away 2 is 8, 9 take away 9 is 0, 9 take away 9 is 0, and 7 take away 4 is 3. So that means that Mr. Jones made a profit of £3,008, so his profit is £3,008, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 13. Timothy saves £34 a week, and we've been asked to work out how much money Timothy will save in one year. So we want to work out how much money he saves in one year, and he saves £34 a week. So there's 52 weeks in a year, so if we do 34 multiplied by 52, that'll tell us how much money Timothy saves in a year. So 2 times 4 is equal to 8, and 2 times 3 is equal to 6. Now we're going to multiply by 50, so put our 0 down. 5 times 4 is 20, so put our 0 down, carry our 2. And 5 times 3 is equal to 15, plus 2 is 17. And then if we add together, 8 plus 0 is 8, 6 plus 0 is 6, 7 and 1. So altogether, that's going to be £1,768. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 14. Okay, question number 14 says, a fader has got 46 rows. So there's 46 rows in a fader. Um, maybe go like A, B, C, D, E, F, G up the way to Z. That'd be 26. Then maybe like A, 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 B, and so on. I don't know. And then we're told that there's 42 seats in each row. So it'd be like A1, A2, A3, all the way to 42. So you've got 46 rows of 42 seats. So if you multiply those two together, that'll tell us how many seats there are in total. And during a show, there's 50 empty seats. Work out how many people are watching the show. So if we know there's 46 rows and there's 42 seats in each row if we do 46 multiplied by 42 that will tell us how many seats there are in total then we know there's 50 empty ones so if we then take away 50 that'll tell us how many people are sat in seats watching the show so let's do 46 multiplied by 42 to begin with so 2 times 6 is 12 put our 2 down carry our 1 and 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9 now we're going to multiply by 40 so put our 0 down 4 times 6 is equal to 24, so put our 4 down, carry our 2, and 4 times 4 is 16, plus 2 is 18. And then if we add them together, 2 plus 0 is 2, 9 plus 4 is equal to 13, so put our 3 down, carry our 1, 8 plus 1 is 9, and 1. So altogether, in this fader, there's 1,932 seats. Now there's 50 empty seats, so if we take away 50, that'll tell us how many people are watching the show. So 2 take away 0 is 2, 3 take away 5, well let's borrow, so it's an 8 and a 13. 13 take away 5 is 8, 8 and 1. So there's 1,882 people watching the show, and that's it. So 1,882 people. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So question number 15. So question number 15 says, Jordan spends 35 minutes reading every day. And work out how long Jordan spends reading during the month of July. Give your answer in minutes. So we need to know how many days are in July. So the saying's like 30 days have September and so on. I know July's got 31 days. That's how I remember it. Just I know it. <laughs> and then we've been asked to work out how long he spends reading in July. Now he reads 35 minutes every single day. So we know that there's 31 days. He reads for 35 minutes on each of those days. So if we do 31 multiplied by 35, that'll be how long he spends in minutes reading in the month of July. So let's do that. So 35 multiplied by 31. 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 3 is 3. Put our 0 down. 3 times 5 is 15, so put our 5 down, carry 1. And 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So then if we add these together, 5 plus 0 is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8, 0, and 1. So altogether, in the month of July, he spends 1,085 minutes reading, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 16. So question number 16 says, Amanda buys eight boxes of sweets. 
and each box contains 12 packets of sweets and each packet contains 16 sweets. How many sweets does Amanda buy in total? <laughs> Too many. <laughs> okay. So first of all, each packet contains 16 sweets and there's 12 packets in a box. So if we do 12 times 16, that'll be how many sweets are in a box. So let's do that. So let's take our 16 and multiply by 12 and that'll be how many sweets are in each box because there's 12 packets, each with 16 sweets. So two times six is 12, put our two down, carry our one. Two times one is two plus one is three. Now we're gonna multiply by 10, so put our zero down. One times six is six and one times one is one. And then if we add them together, two plus zero is equal to two. Three plus six is equal to nine and then we've got our one. So each box contains 192 sweets. Now she buys eight boxes of sweets. So if we times this by eight, we'll see how many sweets she buys in total. So one five, so one hundred ninety-two multiplied by eight. So eight times two is equal to sixteen. Put our six down, carry our one. Eight times nine is seventy-two. Plus one is seventy-three. So put our three down, carry our seven. And eight times one is eight. Plus seven is equal to fifteen. So that means she buys one thousand five hundred and thirty-six sweets. So let's write that down. One thousand five hundred and thirty-six sweets. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question, question number 17, we've been asked to write down the two missing digits to make this calculation correct. So we've got 50 something multiplied by something with it that ends in an eight. And then we've got some answers. We've got 448, we've got 1,680, and the final answer is 2,128. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by trying to find this number to begin with, this number here. Because I know that whenever I do eight times this number, whatever I get, it ends in an eight. So it could be a one. Let's see if it's a one. Eight times one is equal to eight. That's great. And then we've got eight times five and that's equal to 40. So that would be four zero. So we'd have four zero eight. So it can't be a one there. Now it can't be a two because eight times two is 16. It can't be a, so it can't be a two because eight times two is 16 and that's an eight, it ends in an eight. It can't be a three because eight times three is 24. It can't be four because eight times four is equal to 32. And this again, and we want something that ends in an eight. It can't be five, eight times five is 40. Let's see, can it be six? Eight times six is 48, that's great. So put our eight down, carry our four. Eight times five is 40, plus four is 44, fantastic. So this digit here must be a six, so that's fantastic. Now we wanna find this digit here. So that means, so if we were then to do, we've done eight times 56, we now need to multiply the 56 by whatever this is. So we'd put our zero down. We would do something times six, and then it ends in an eight. So it can't be a one, because one times six isn't eight. Can it be a two? Two times six is 12. It doesn't end in an eight. Three, is it a three? Let's see. Three times six is 18. Put our eight down, carry our one. And three times five is equal to 15 plus one is 16. And that's it, fantastic. So that means that the missing digits must have been a six and a three. So that would be 56 multiplied by 38 is equal to 2,128. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 18. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 18. So question number 18, we've got this patio and it measures six meters by eight meters. So it's a rectangle, six meters by eight meters. And we've got this tile or paving slab, which is one meter by one meter. And we're told that Leanne is tiling her patio. So she's putting tiles on this patio and the patio, as we're told, it measures six meters by eight meters. And each square tile is one meter by one meter. And each tile costs three pound. So one tile costs three pound. And we've been asked to calculate the cost of tile in the patio so we want to find the cost of all the tiles needed for this patio now as you can see here we've got six meters and these are square tiles that measure one meter by one meter so because this is six meters if we were to put tiles along this way there would be six tiles so it looks something like this as you can see, we've got six rows of tiles. Now, if we consider it this way, we've got eight meters and each tile is one meter by one meter. So that would mean we'd have eight columns like so. So we've got six rows of eight tiles. So that means if we were to work out how many tiles we'd need, we just need to do six multiplied by eight. And if we do six multiplied by eight, that'll be how many tiles there'd be. So six times eight is equal to 48. So there'd be 48 tiles needed and each tile is three pound. So if we do 48 multiplied by three, that's the cost of the tiles. So 48 multiplied by three. So three times eight is 24. Let's put our four down and carry our two. Three times four is 12 plus two is 14. So that means the tiles would cost 144 pound so the cost of the tiles is 144 pound 
and that's it. So in this question, we know that each tile is one meter by one meter. We've got six meters by eight meters, so there'd be six rows of eight tiles. Six times eight is 48, so there's 48 tiles needed, and each one's three pounds, so when you multiply by three, that's 144 pounds. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've got a wall, and it's three meters by six meters, and we've got these tiles, and Molly's telling her bathroom wall, and the wall measures six meters by three meters, and each tile is a square tile, but this time it's 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters that's half a meter by half a meter or 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters and we're told that each tile costs four pound and we've been asked to work out the cost of tile in this wall so let's work out how many tiles would be on this wall so we've got 50 centimeters or half a meter and because we've got three meters or 300 centimeters if we do 300 divided by 50 that'll tell us how many tiles will fit up the wall like so so how many 50 is going to 300 well 50 100 150, 200, 250, 300. So that's six tiles. So that means there's going to be six rows. So let's do six rows. One. So as you can see, we've got six rows. And in terms of how many tiles will fit along the wall, so we've got 600 centimeters here. So 600 centimeters. And we're going to divide that by 50 because each tile is a 50 by 50 centimeters square. So 600 divided by 50. So how many 50 is going to 600? Well, it'll be 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, and so on. And that's going to be 12. So that means it's going to be 12 columns like so. So as you can see, we've got six rows of 12 tiles. Now, this isn't necessarily the best diagram, but it's just to show you. So if we had these square tiles, I'm looking at this one and then comparing it to this one, they're a bit different in terms of size or that one or that one. Uh, but we've got these square tiles and all together the six rows and in each row, there's 12 tiles. So if we do six times 12, that's equal to 72. Six 12 is 72. So the 72 tiles needed, and each tile costs four pound. So if we do 72 multiplied by four, that's the cost of the tiles. Four times two is eight, and four times seven is 28. So the tiles would cost 288 pound. So let's write that down. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 20. So question number 20, we've got this advertisement and it says Cars Are Us, and we've got a small car, costs £37 per day, plus 25p per mile. And Susie hires a small car for nine days, so it's going to be nine days at £37 a day, so that's going to be nine days at £37 a day, and she drives 200 miles, and that's going to be 200 miles at 25p per mile. And we've been asked to find the total cost. So let's find out the cost of hiring the car per day, first of all, so that's going to be £30. 37 pound multiplied by 9 and let's work out what that would be 9 times 7 is 63 so let's put our 3 down and carry our 6 and 9 times 3 is 27 plus 3 is 33 so that means that the car costs 333 pound regardless of how many miles are driven but also there's 25 p per mile and she drives 200 miles so let's take our 200 and multiply it by 25 so let's start so let's take our 25 and multiply it by 200. now we could do this the way around and write 225 beneath it but it doesn't really matter which way around you do it so we're going to multiply 25 by 200 so let's put our two zeros down and then two times five is ten so, so zero and carry our one and two times two is four plus one is five so it's going to be five thousand pence and that's in pence because it's 25p per mile so that's 333 pounds and 5,000 pence now let's change our pence into pounds so to go from pence to pounds we divide by 100 so if we take our 5,000 and divide it by 100 that'll be 50 pound so that means if we add those together our 333 pound and our 50 pound that'll be the total cost of Susie hiring the car so 333 plus 50 is going to be equal to 383 pound and that's it 383 okay let's have a look at our next question Okay, so question number 21. So question number 21, we've got this rectangle and we're told the area of a rectangle is found by multiplying the length by the width. So to find the area of a rectangle, we do the length multiplied by the width. And we've been asked to calculate the area of this rectangle. So we just need to take the length, which is 27, and multiply by the width, which is 14. So 27 multiplied by 14. And let's see what we get. So 4 times 7 is equal to 28. So put our 8 down and carry our 2. 4 times 2 is equal to 8, plus 2 is 10. So that means that 27 times 4 is equal to 108. It. Now let's multiply by 10, so let's put our 0 down. 1 times 7 is 7, and 1 times 2 is 2. So now if we add these together, we're going to get 8 plus 0 is 8, 0 plus 7 is 7, and 1 plus 2 is 3. So that means the area of this rectangle is 378 centimetres squared. And that makes sense, because we would have, if we divided this up into 1 centimetre by 1 centimetre squares, we would have 14 rows, and we would have 27 in each row, and 14 times 27 would be 378. So it would be 378 little squares in that rectangle, and that means the area, and each one has an area of 1 centimetre squared, so the total 
whole area would be 378 centimeters squared. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So question number 22. So question number 22 says a primary school of carpet in a classroom. And the room is 9 meters by 7 meters. So we've got this room. It's a rectangle or a room. And it's 9 meters by 7 meters. And the carpet costs £29 per square meter. Calculate the cost of the carpet. So we want to find out how many square meters there are. So let's find the area of the room. So if we do 9 multiplied by 7, that's the area of this rectangular classroom. 9 times 7 is 63. So that means the area of the classroom is 63 meters squared or 63 square meters. Now the carpet costs £29 per square meter. So if we know we need 63 square meters, that's 63 lots off £29. So we now need to do 63 multiplied by 29 and that'll be the cost of the carpet. So let's do that. 63 multiplied multiplied by 29. 9 times 3 is equal to 27, put our 7 down and carry our 2. 9 times 6 is 54, plus 2 is 56. Now we want to multiply by 20, so let's put our 0 down. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 6 is 12. So we've got our 567 and our 1260, let's add them together. 7 plus 0 is 7, 6 plus 6 is 12, so put our 2 down and carry our 1. 5 plus 2 is 7, plus 1 is 8, and then we've got our 1. So it means the cost of the carpet is £1,827. So £1,827. And that's it. OK, let's have a look at our next question, question number 23. So question number 23 says, James bought a motor scooter on hire purchase. So he paid a deposit of £275, and then he makes 18 monthly payments of £36. And at the end of the payments, he then sold the scooter for £450. How much did it cost him in total? So let's work out how much money James paid for the scooter to begin with. So he paid a deposit of £275 and then he does 18 monthly payments of £36. So if we do 18 times 36, that'll be the total cost of the monthly payments. So let's do 36 multiplied by 18. So 8 times 6 is 48, put our 8 down and carry our 4. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 4 is 28. So that means that 36 times 8 is 288. Now we need to do 36 times 10. So put our 0 down, 1 times 6 is 6, and 1 times 3 is 3. And then if we add these together, 8 plus 0 is 8. 8 plus 6 is 14, put our 4 down and carry our 1. And 2 plus 3 plus 1 is equal to 6. So that means that his monthly payments would be £648. So let's work how much money James spent in total on the scooter. So we've got our deposit of £275 and his monthly payments of £648. If we add those together, that'll be how much money he paid in total for the scooter. So, so 8 plus 5 is 13, put our 3 down and carry our 1. 4 plus 7 is 11, plus 1 is 12, so put our 2 down and carry our 1. And 6 plus 2 plus 1 is 9. So that means that in total, James paid £923. But then he, at the end of the payments, he sold the scooter. So he sold it for £450. So if we take the £450 off how much he spent in total, that'll be how much it cost him. So £923, take away the 450 So that'll tell us how much the scooter cost him. So 3 take away 0 is 3. 2 take away 5, we need to borrow, so cross off the 9, that's an 8 and a 12. 12 take away 5 is 7, and 8 take away 4 is 4. So that means that it cost him £473, because he paid £923. He then got 450 back, so altogether it cost him £473. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 24. So question number 24, we've been asked to work out 375 multiplied by 52. So 375 multiplied by 52. So let's do 375 multiplied by 2 to begin with. So 2 times 5 is 10, put our 0 down and carry 1. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15, put the 5 down and carry 1. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So 375 times 2 is 750. Now we need to multiply by 50, so put our 0 down. So we've got 5 times 5 is 25, put down a 5, carry a 2. Then we've got 5 times 7 is equal to 35, plus 2 is 37, so put a 7 down, carry a 3. And 5 times 3 is equal to 15, plus 3 is 18. So that means that 375 times 50 is 18,750. Now if we add these together, that'll be our answer. 0 plus 0 is 0. 5 plus 5 is 10, so put a 0 down and carry a 1. 7 plus 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15, put a 5 down and carry a 1. 8 plus 1 is 9, and then 1. So that means the answer is 19,500, and that's it.
OK, let's have a look at the next question, question number 25. So question number 25, we've been asked to work out 418 multiplied by 129. So 418 multiplied by 129, and then we'll do our line beneath it and our multiplication symbol like so. So 9 times 8 is equal to 72, so put a 7 so put a 2 down, carry a 7. 9 times 1 is equal to 9, plus 7 is 16. Put a 6 down, carry a 1. 9 times 4 is equal to 36, plus 1 is 37. So that means that 418 multiplied by 9 is 3,762. Now we need to multiply by 20, so put a 0 down. 2 times 8 is equal to 16, put a 6 down, carry a 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, and 2 times 4 is equal to 8. So that means that 418 multiplied by 20 is 8,360. Now we need to multiply by 100, so put a 0 down and another 0 down. 1 times 8 is equal to 8, 1 times 1 is equal to 1, and 1 times 4 is equal to 4. So now we just need to add these together. 2 plus 0 plus 0 is 2. 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 0 is 12, put a 2 down, carry a 1. 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 8 is 18, plus 1 is 19, put a 9 down, carry a 1. 3 plus 8 is equal to 11, plus another 1 and plus another 1 will be 13, put a 3 down and carry a 1, and 4 plus 1 is 5. So that means that 418 multiplied by 129 would be 53,922. So 53,922, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, question number 26. So question number 26 says, Kyle is organising a charity concert at school and the concert is sold out. So he sold all the tickets. The hall holds 28 rows and in each row there's 16 seats and each person pays £6. How much money will Kyle raise for charity? So let's work out how many seats there are in total. There's 28 rows of 16 seats. If we multiply these together, it tells us how many seats there are. So 28 multiplied by 16. So 6 times 8 is 48. So put an 8 down, carry a 4. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 4 is equal to 16. Now we need to multiply by 10 to put a 0 down. 1 times 8 is 8, and 1 times 2 is 2. Now we just need to add together. 8 plus 0 is 8. 6 plus 8 is 14, put a 4 down and carry a 1. And 1 plus 2 plus 1 is equal to 4. So that means there's 448 seats in total, and each person pays £6. So if we take the number of seats, 448, and if we multiply that by 6, that'll be how much money Kyle raises for charity. So 6 times 8 is equal to 48, put an 8 down and carry a 4. 6 times 4 is equal to 24, plus 4 is 28, so put the 8 down and carry the 2. 6 times 4 again is equal to 24, plus 2 is 26. So that means that he raises in total £2,688, and that's it. OK, let's look at our last question, question number 27, and it's a calculator question, so that's great. So we're told that Martina has 24 crates of oranges, and each crate weighs 37.3 kilograms. A Martina's van can hold a cargo of up to 900 kilograms. Will the van be able to hold all 24 crates? So if we know that there's 24 crates and they each weigh 37.3 kilograms, if we do 37.3 kilograms multiplied by 24, that's how heavy the 24 crates of oranges are. So if we take our 37.3 and multiply that by 24, that's equal to 37.3 multiplied by 24 is equal to 895.2 kilograms. Now the van can hold a cargo up to 900 kilograms, and this is less than 900 kilograms, so that means the van can hold that. It can't hold anything above 900 kilograms, but it can hold anything up to 900 kilograms. So that means that her van will be able to carry the weight off those, those crates, as long as obviously they can fit into the van. So will the van be able to carry all 24 crates? Yes, as 895.2 kilograms is less than 900 kilograms and that's it so her van should be able to carry them again as long as they all fit so that's it so these have been the video solutions to the multiplication practice questions on corporate maths i really hope you found this video useful if you have found it useful please like it and please subscribe to the youtube channel if you need any extra help on multiplication if you go to corporate forward slash contents and scroll down to video numbers 199 and 200 there's dedicated video tutorials there on multiplication alternatively you could scan this qr code also on those videos or beside those video numbers you'll find the practice questions these questions but also the textbook exercises and they can be useful as well and that's it so again i really really hope you find this video useful if you have found it useful please like it and please subscribe to the youtube channel thank you cheers bye